Okay, so today we're going to compare and contrast autosomal recessive inheritance versus autosomal dominance. Let's get started. Okay, so you might recognize this picture as what's called a karyotype, a picture of a person's chromosomes. Now, chromosome 23 are called the sex chromosomes because they influence and have genes on them that determine our gender. The other 22 chromosomes are called autosomes, and autosome is a non-sex chromosome. There are no genes on these chromosomes that influence gender. And so when we study genetics, we often study autosomal recessive and autosomal dominant disorders. These are actual disorders that are caused by an afflicted gene that can be found on an autosome. For instance, you might have heard of the, dis of the disorder called cystic fibrosis. The gene that causes it has been located on chromosome 7. Chromosome 7 is an autosome, and that's why cystic fibrosis is an autosomal disorder. Huntington's disease is another example of an autosomal disorder because the gene is on chromosome 4, which is an autosome. Sickle cell disease is another example of an autosomal disorder. The gene for sickle cell has been found on chromosome 11. Chromosome 11 is an autosome. You know, that's different than, let's say, hemophilia. Hemophilia is a disorder where the, the gene has been located on one of the sex chromosomes. Hemophilia is what's called a sex-linked disorder. So when we study autosomal disorders, and autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive, it's because the gene is on one of the 22 autosome chromosomes. Okay, so let's compare and contrast two different families here. The family on the left we're going to use as an example of a family who will be experiencing an autosomal recessive disorder, and the family on the right will be experiencing an autosomal dominant disorder. Well, let's start with the left, autosomal recessive. One of the most basic rules of an autosomal recessive disorder is that sufferers of these disorders must inherit two alleles in order to have the disorder. They must inherit an allele from the dad and from the mom. This makes healthy dominant and having the disorder is then recessive. So because healthy is dominant, I like to use a capital H. Capital letters represent dominant alleles and recessive uh, we use lowercase letters to represent recessive alleles. Well, examples of disorders that are autosomal recessive would be, for instance, sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis, phenylketonuria, abbreviated as PKU, and albinism. These are all examples. In order to suffer from cystic fibrosis, you must inherit not one but two alleles, one from the mom, one from the dad. So if a child were to inherit a dominant allele from the dad, uh, dad and a dominant allele from the mom, this common combination is called homozygous dominant. The child would be born healthy. They would not have, for instance, cystic fibrosis or sickle cell or albinism. But if the dad, well, let's look at what happens if the dad passes on a dominant allele, and let's look what happens if the mom passes on a recessive allele. Now, because the child still has one healthy dominant allele, one capital H, the child will be healthy. This combination is called heterozygous. The child would be healthy, although we would call them a carrier because they still carry the recessive allele in their DNA. They could ultimately pass it on to their child when, uh, you know, 25 years down the road when this person, when this child has a, a kid of, of his or her own. So what happens if the dad passes on the recessive allele and also the mom passes on the recessive allele? This combination is called homozygous recessive, and this is the only way a child could inherit an autosomal recessive disorder, such as sickle cell or cystic fibrosis. You have to inherit not one recessive allele, but two. That's, some of the, that's one of the most basic rules of an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. So how does this differ from autosomal dominance? Let's look at the, the family on the right now. Sufferers of disorders that are autosomal dominant, if you suffer from the disorder, you only have to inherit one allele in order to have the disorder. This makes the disorder the dominant trait.
and therefore, sadly, healthy is recessive. So when I look at my key, notice how the key has changed. The disorder is represented by the dominant capital H, and being healthy is represented by the lowercase recessive H. Examples of autosomal dominant disorders would be Huntington's disease. You might hear it called HD for Huntington's disease. And one called, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, familial hypercholesterolemia, or you might also hear it just called FH. These are two examples of autosomal dominant disorders. So if a father passes on a dominant capital H allele and the mom passes on a dominant capital H allele, this child would be born with a homozygous dominant disorder. Maybe Huntington's disease, maybe, maybe the familial hypercholesterolemia. And to make matters even worse, if this person was, if this child were born with a homozygous dominant, capital H, capital H, let's say it's uh, Huntington's disease we're talking about. Well, this condition is so severe because they inherited not one of the of the disordered alleles, but two, not one of the defected alleles, but two, chances are this child would experience very early death, usually only a couple years of life, and, and they just don't live into the adulthood years of life. So it's really sad. Well, what if the father passed on a dominant allele, and what if uh, the mother passed on a recessive allele? Now this is still called heterozygous, but notice how the, the child still has the disorder. They inherited one dominant H, and notice in the key, the capital H represents the disorder. Well, this is still, for instance, Huntington's disease, heterozygous uh, with Huntington's disease, but the difference being is that this version is more moderate. It's not as severe as capital H, capital H, homozygous dominant. For instance, people who have Huntington's disease and are born heterozygous, they typically will live a fairly normal life up until maybe around age 40 or so when they start to show signs of Huntington's disease. And then ultimately there's a downhill progression where uh, the, the disease eventually claims their life. But they'll at least live into their adulthood years to maybe have a family, have a family and, and have children of their own. And so the only way to actually be healthy if you have an autosomal dominant disorder in your family is to inherit not one recessive healthy allele from the dad, but also a recessive allele from the mom. Homozygous recessive is the only way in which you, uh, which you would uh, have you know, a healthy phenotype. So let's solve a couple Punnett squares here. Autosomal recessive on the left first. If I said a father was heterozygous, capital H, lowercase h, and I also said the mother was heterozygous, capital H, lowercase h, I then fill in the Punnett squares. This would create a healthy phenotype. Fill in the Punnett square again. This would create another healthy phenotype, although they'd be a carrier, they're still healthy fill in the Punnett square again. Here we have another healthy phenotype. Again, the child could be, uh, would be a carrier. And then the only way to actually have the disorder is if you were homozygous recessive, lowercase h, lowercase h. So now for the autosomal dominant side. Pretend we have a man who's heterozygous for Huntington's disease. Well, he's heterozygous and he has the moderate form of Huntington's disease. He's clearly an adult old enough to marry and have children, so he must have the moderate version. Same for the mom. What if the mom was heterozygous? She too would have the moderate version, perhaps, of Huntington's disease. And when we do the Punnett square, we see, oh no, they can actually have a child with the severest form of Huntington's disease. They could also have a child with the moderate version of Huntington's disease. And in the next Punnett square, we can see they could have a child with a moderate version of the disorder. So notice three out of four squares would result in a child with Huntington's disease. And there's only a one out of four chance that they would have a healthy child. So if the disorder is dominant, you only have to inherit one of the alleles. But on the left side, if the disorder is recessive, you have to inherit not one, but two in order to have the disorder.
So let's do a couple more practice problems. On the left, pretend we have a family with a history of PKU. Now the man's story says he's a heterozygous carrier. Now he's got to be one of these three genotypes. Which genotype would be a heterozygous carrier? Well, it's not capital H, capital H, and it's not lower H, lower H. Heterozygous means one capital letter, one lowercase letter. And so there's the genotype of the man. Now the woman suffers from PKU according to the story. So she's one of these three genotypes. Which genotype would be a sufferer of a autosomal recessive disorder such as PKU? It's not capital H, capital H. That's a healthy woman or healthy man even, and it's not capital H, lowercase h, because that too would be a healthy person. The only way to suffer from PKU would be, to be, would be if you were homozygous recessive. So when we fill in the Punnett square, we can see that as the squares get filled in, we can see that this man and woman have a 50% chance of having a healthy child who's a carrier and a 50% chance of having a child with the disorder PKU. Now for the family on the right. Pretend they have a history of Huntington's disease. Now the man is one of these three genotypes. Now the story says the man's healthy. So which combination would give us a healthy individual? It's not capital H, capital H because the disorder is dominant. It's not capital H, lowercase h because again the disorder would be dominant. The only way to be healthy is if you're homozygous recessive. Now for the woman, the woman's one of these three genotypes. Now which one is she? The story says she's a sufferer of Huntington's disease. If she has the disease, I know she's not lower H, lower H. So which one is it? Both of the two that are left would be a person with the disorder. The difference being she cannot be capital H, capital H, because that's the severe version where they just don't live into their adulthood years. Clearly the story implies that she's an adult woman married old enough to have kids of her own. She must have the heterozygous moderate version of the disorder. So as the Punnett squares get filled in, we can see that they have a 50% chance of having a child with the moderate version of the disorder and they have a 50% chance of having a child that's healthy. But because the disorder is dominant, the ind individuals only need to inherit one allele to receive the disorder. But on the left side, they have to inherit not one, but two in order to have the recessive disorder. So I wanna leave this up here for you to compare and contrast. Uh, just a summary, pause the video if you'd like to, you know, review the summary in a little more detail. And I'd love to uh, hear your, your comments in the box below. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.